In mathematics, Fermat's theorem is a method to find local maxima and minima of differentiable functions on open sets by showing that every local extremum of the function is a stationary point. Fermat's theorem is a theorem in real analysis, named after Pierre de Fermat. By using Fermat's theorem, the potential extrema of a function, with derivative, are found by solving an equation in. Fermat's theorem gives only a necessary condition for extreme function values, and some stationary points are inflection points. The function's second derivative, if it exists, can determine if any stationary point is a maximum, minimum, or inflection point. Statement one way to state Fermat's theorem is that whenever you compute the derivative of a function's local extrema, the result will always be zero. In precise mathematical language, let be a function and suppose that is a local extremum of, if is differentiable it then. Another way to understand the theorem is via the contrapositive statement. If the derivative of a function at any point is not zero, that point is not an extrema. Formally, if is differentiable it and then is not a local extremum of f. Corollary the global extrema of a function f on a domain a occur only at boundaries, non-differentiable points, and stationary points. If is a global extremum of f, then one of the following is true. Boundary is in the boundary of a non-differentiable. f is not differentiable it. Stationary point is a stationary point of f, extension in higher dimensions, exactly the same statement holds, however, the proof is slightly more complicated. Thus, if the derivative does not vanish, one must argue that there is some direction in which the function increases, and thus in the opposite direction the function decreases. This is the only change to the proof or the analysis. Applications Fermat's theorem is central to the calculus method of determining maxima and minima. In one dimension, one can find extrema by simply computing the stationary points, the non-differentiable points, and the boundary points, and then investigating this set to determine the extrema. One can do this either by evaluating the function at each point and taking the maximum, or by analyzing the derivatives further. Using the first derivative test, the second derivative test, or the higher order derivative test. Intuitive argument. Intuitively, a differentiable function is approximated by its derivative. A differentiable function behaves infinitesimally like a linear function or more. Precisely. Thus, from the perspective that, if f is differentiable and has non-vanishing derivative at then it does not attain an extreme at, the intuition is that, if the derivative at is positive, the function is increasing near while if the derivative is negative, the function is decreasing near in both cases. It cannot attain a maximum or minimum, because its value is changing. It can only attain a maximum or minimum if it stops, if the derivative vanishes. However, making behaves like a linear function precise requires careful analytic proof. More precisely, the intuition can be stated as if the derivative is positive, there is some point to the right of where f is greater and some point to the left of where f is less. And thus f attains neither a maximum nor a minimum at conversely, if the derivative is negative, there is a point to the right which is lesser and a point to the left which is greater. Stated this way, the proof is just translating this into equations and verifying how much greater or less. The intuition is based on the behavior of polynomial functions. Assume that function f has a maximum at x0, the reasoning being similar for a function minimum. If is a local maximum then, roughly, there is a neighborhood of such as the function is increasing before and decreasing after. As the derivative is positive for an increasing function and negative for a decreasing function, is positive before and negative after, doesn't skip values, so it has to be zero at some point between the positive and negative values. The only point in the neighborhood where it is possible to have is 
The theorem is more general than the intuition in that it doesn't require the function to be differentiable over a neighborhood around. It is sufficient for the function to be differentiable only in the extreme point. Proof. Proof 1. Non-vanishing derivatives implies not extreme im. Suppose that f is differentiable at with derivative k, and assume without loss a generality that so the tangent line it has positive slope. Then there is a neighborhood of on which the secant lines through all have positive slope, and thus to the right of f is greater, and to the left of f is lesser. The schematic of the proof is an infinitesimal statement about derivative it implies, a local statement about difference quotients near which implies, a local statement about the value of f near, formally, by the definition of derivative, means that in particular, for sufficiently small, the fraction must be at least by the definition of limit. Thus on the interval, one has, one has replaced the equality in the limit with an inequality on a neighborhood, thus rearranging the equation, if then, so on the interval to the right, f is greater than an if then, so on the interval to the left, f is less than thus is not a local or global maximum or minimum of f. Proof 2. Extremum implies derivative vanishes alternatively. One can start by assuming that is a local maximum, and then prove that the derivative is zero. Suppose that is a local maximum, then there such that and such that we have with. Hence for any we notice that it holds since the limit of this ratio as gets close to zero from above exists and is equal to we conclude that. On the other hand for we notice that but again the limit as gets close to zero from below exists and is equal to so we also have. Hence we conclude that cautions. A subtle misconception that is often held in the context of Fermat's theorem is to assume that it makes a stronger statement about local behavior than it does. Notably, Fermat's theorem does not say that functions increase up to or decrease down from a local maximum. This is very similar to the misconception that a limit means monotonically getting closer to a point. 4. Well-behaved functions. Some intuitions hold, but in general functions may be ill-behaved, as illustrated below. The moral is that derivatives determine infinitesimal behavior, and that continuous derivatives determine local behavior. Continuously differentiable functions if f is continuously differentiable on an open neighborhood of the point, then does mean that f is increasing on a neighborhood of as follows. If and then by continuity of the derivative, there is some such that, then f is increasing on this interval, by the mean value theorem, the slope of any secant line is at least as it equals the slope of some tangent line. However, in the general statement of Fermat's theorem, where one is only given that the derivative it is positive, one can only conclude that secant lines through will have positive slope, for secant lines between and near enough points. Conversely, if the derivative of f at a point is zero, one cannot in general conclude anything about the local behavior of f, it may increase to one side and decrease to the other, increase to both sides, decrease to both sides, or behave in more complicated ways, such as oscillating. One can analyze the infinitesimal behavior via the second derivative test and higher order derivative test, if the function is differentiable enough. And if the first non-vanishing derivative it is a continuous function, one can then conclude local behavior. Then one can treat f as locally close to a polynomial of degree k, since it behaves approximately as but if the kth derivative is not continuous. One cannot draw such conclusions, and it may behave rather differently. Pathological functions consider the function, it oscillates increasingly rapidly between and as x approaches zero. Consider then, this oscillates increasingly rapidly between zero and as x approaches zero. If one extends this function by then the function is continuous and everywhere differentiable, but has rather unexpected behavior near zero. In any neighborhood of zero it attains zero infinitely many times, but also equals infinitely often. Continuing in this vein, oscillates between an and is a local and global minimum. 
but on no neighborhood of zero is it decreasing down to or increasing up from zero it oscillates wildly near zero. This pathology can be understood because, while the function is everywhere differentiable, it is not continuously differentiable. The limit of as does not exist, so the derivative is not continuous at zero. This reflects the oscillation between increasing and decreasing values as it approaches zero.